The following is an EHC Media Production. Uncut and often controversial coverage of all things wrestling. There's one place to get it, with some good old banter thrown in. Join the Butcher and myself, two-time knowledge champion Mike Larkin, along with your host Dazzy Dangerously, every Friday for the Max Wrestling Podcast, with championship specials every two to three months. WWE, New Japan, Ring of Honor, and the company with many names and more. On Facebook. YouTube, SoundCloud, Podomatic, iTunes, and Stitcher. We must now bid you adieu. Goodbye. Mwah. And good night. Bye. What is going on, RWT? This is Mike Larkin, the host of The Future Is Now, and welcome to episode 17. As always, I'm taking a look at this week's NXT and this week's 205 Live. Uh, both solid shows. One asks us the question, the pivotal question, why Johnny Why? And then the other one asks us, who's going to be the next contender for the Cruiserweight Championship? We'll find out. Let's get it rolling. Let's talk about some 205 Live. And now let's get into 205 Live. 205 Live, we started not even into the match, but uh, we actually started with a great video package highlighting what would be the main event of the show. Uh, we start off with Mustafa Ali talking about Hideo Itami attacking him during his match with Buddy Murphy. Hideo says Ali made it personal. Ali says he was not at 100% when he faced Adami the first time. We hear Drake Maverick talking about Ali having to take time off. Ali says it did not have to happen and he saw Tommy for a month. Tommy says Ali should have quit and he made a mistake. Ali says it is more than beating Itami. It is necessary. We see Ali telling Cedric Alexander about the Falls Can Anywhere match. Itami says that he needs to beat Ali to send a message to the locker room. Ali says that Itami will respect him. A great opening promo and a great opening package to showcase what would become a great main event. Now we start off with our opening matchup with Lince Dorado representing the Lucha House Party against Mike Kanellis. And, well, I'm just going to say this. I got to do it because... My boy Butcher, you know where I'm going with this. We both love it. All right, so before I even talk about the match, here we go. Love it every time I hear it. So we just open it up with Mike Kanellis, Power of Love, the power couple of 205 Live taking on Lince Dorado. This comes after Mike Kanellis attacked Lince Dorado during his matchup with Leo Rush. Uh, this was actually very good. We saw TJP watching in the back because TJP is currently feuding with the Lucha House Party. 
it was really good. I mean, we saw a lot of, um, you know, the drop kicks and Lince Dorado doing his lucha moves. Uh, just, it was really, really good. I mean, Mike Canellis was doing his thing, working over on him. Uh, but both these guys had great chemistry. I'm just going to put it like that. I would definitely go out of your way to watch this match. I'm very happy to see Mike Canellis actually getting to showcase his talents. I mean, last time we saw him, he was in the greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia, and he got eliminated very quickly. Uh, we saw him in that brawl with Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman during that whole thing. We also saw Gulak in that one as well. But, I mean, Mike Canellis, uh, the last time I think a lot of people heard about where he was wrestling, he was wrestling Zack Ryder on main event. Now he's on 205 Live. Uh, he picks up a win here, and we're going to get to that. But I'm just very happy, like I mentioned uh, last week. I'm, I'm, I was a big fan of Mike Canellis, Mike Bennett, and uh, Ring of Honor, Impact Wrestling. And I'm very happy to see him doing his thing in the WWE. Um, the finish actually was very, very good. So we got where um, uh, Dorado hits a nice Frankensteiner on uh, Mike Canales for a near fall. Uh, Canales grabs a leg and Dorado with an Insiguri. Dorado with a Canales for a spine buster for a near fall. Dorado with a handspring cutter. That sends Canales to the floor. Dorado with a plancha. Uh, Dorado goes up top. Excuse me. Dorado goes up top for the shooting star and he hits it. Uh, Canales gets his foot on the rope. Great ring awareness. Uh, Mike Canellis goes to the floor, and Dorado follows. Canellis pushes Kalisto into Metalik, and Dorado hits a head scissors off the apron, which was very nice. Uh, Canellis sends Dorado into the ropes and hits the swing in reverse DDT for the 1-2-3. Uh, Mike Canellis, with his lovely wife Maria by his side, gets the victory in your opening contest. Gets the victory, baby. Uh, we go backstage, and Drake Maverick thanks everyone for the support given that this is 205 Live's 100th episode. But tonight's episode exemplifies what 205 Live is all about, the best cruiserweight wrestling in the world. Hideo Itami is a Japanese legend. Mustafa Ali made it into the cruiserweight class. He has an alternate. Both men have made it to the top of the division. Next week, we will have a match to determine the first challenger for Buddy Murphy's title. Uh, Brian Kendrick cuts a promo, asks Drew Gulak and Jack Gallagher if they thought it would be that easy to get rid of him. Did you say that? I had to show no mercy. This is what you will get next week. So next week we're going to get Brian Kendrick versus Jack Gallagher. Uh, then they showcase the fact that Tony Nese won the fatal five-way matchup, and we show highlights of that. Leo Rush cuts a promo, says he was not defeated last week. The rumor about Cedric almost beating him, that is insane. You win by luck in those matches. Leo says to be better than somebody, you have to beat them in one-on-one -on -one competition. Leo says he is still undefeated in one-on-one -on -one action. I'm going to say it right now. I've been saying it for many episodes. I want to see Cedric Alexander versus Leo Rush. Tony Nese and Buddy Murphy are backstage. They're being interviewed. Uh, they're asked about the match to determine Buddy's first opponent. Buddy Murphy says that Drake has the chance to show what type of leader he can be, but it should include Tony Nese. Nese says that he beat four others last week and he should have the title match. Tony says that the title pitcher starts and ends with them. This brings us to an amazing main event between Mustafa Ali and Hideo Itami. Uh, just using the stairs, just a leg sweep coming off the barricade, uh, working on the announce table, the steel steps. I mean, just it was just absolutely amazing to see what these guys did with how they you know, incorporated the steel steps, just the brawling aspect. I couldn't say anything but just go out of your way to watch this match. I mean, he hits him with a tornado DDT off the steps after Hideo sends him into and he springboards him. It was just from top to bottom. It was a fight. It was fast-paced. It was just great storytelling from beginning to end. Please go out of your way to watch Mustafa Ali versus uh, Hideo Itami. And what was the culmination uh, in their feud in this False Can Anywhere match? The finish sequence comes. Like I mentioned, he hits the uh, Tornado DDT off the steps. Sets up the table. Uh, he puts uh, Dami on the table, and Ali goes up top. He tells Mustafa Ali... Uh, Mustafa Ali tells Hideo Itami, excuse me. Mustafa Ali says, if I can be serious for a minute and just rephrase that. Uh, Mustafa Ali says, uh, I always respected you. And he hits the 450 on Dadeo Otami through the table for the 1-2-3. And Mustafa Ali is your victor. Uh, great match. Please go out of your way to watch it. Watch 205 Live all in all, but really go out of your way to watch Mustafa Ali versus Dadeo Otami. Great brawl, great high-octane aerial assault. Uh, the incorporation of the steps. Uh, the announce table, just all in all, it's just great. You, we've seen these guys wrestle before. It's great chemistry and a great dynamic between the two. So please go out of your way to you know check out Mustafa Ali and uh, Hideo Itami Falls Ken anywhere match. It was long. That's why I'm pretty much summing up very well. But those are some key elements and key spots. Go out of your way to watch the whole thing, people. Good stuff, good stuff. Afterwards, uh, Drake Maverick is in his office. And Drake calls Ali's victory the biggest win of his career. Next week, Tony Nese will face Mustafa Ali, and the winner will face Buddy Murphy for the Cruiserweight Championship. That was your 205 Live. So next week, we're going to be seeing, um, excuse me, Brian Kendrick versus Jack Gallagher, and Tony Nese 
versus Mustafa Ali. Winner gets first crack at Buddy Murphy and the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. So that is your 205 Live. And now we're going to get into NXT. And again, it gives us that pivotal question. Why Johnny Why? Now let's get into NXT. We open up NXT this week with William Regal instructing security that Aleister Black needs to see William Regal before he enters the building. The Undisputed Era come out. Adam Cole, baby, tells everyone that Bobby Fish is back and the Undisputed Era is at 100%. If you don't believe them, ask the War Raiders, two of the biggest and baddest men in NXT, and they demolish them. If anyone else wants to get in their way, you won't be in their way for long. They will make short work of you. Adam says that they will make people fear NXT. NXT, you are not NXT. The Undisputed Era is NXT. Adam has a message for the man who has his property, that being Ricochet. You defended his title... Uh, against Pete Dunne and himself. You beat Peter Dunne, Peter Dune, Pete Dunne, but you did not beat him because you cannot. When Adam gets his rematch, and before he can say another word, here comes EC3. EC3 tells Adam Cole Bebe that he will impart some knowledge on him. He says Adam does not deserve a rematch for the North American Championship. Adam asks EC3 if it's a smart idea to mess with the Undisputed Era. EC3 points out that you were not pinned, but you did not win. He says it does not matter that Undisputed Era is back at 100% because he is the top 1%. Adam Cole suggests that they have a match, and here we go. And uh, EC3 and Adam Cole have a great match. Uh, back and forth. Uh, it's just, it was great chemistry. Really go out of your way to watch it. Uh, the finishing sequence comes where EC3 punches... Uh, followed by a back elbow and running form. EC3 with a splash into the corner, followed by a German. EC3 goes for the one percenter, but Cole escapes, but misses the bicycle kick. EC3 with a set-out powerbomb for a near fall. Bobby Fish, Kyle, and Roderick distract EC3 and Cole with a super kick. EC3 with a clothesline, and he knocks the other members of the Undisputed Era off the apron. Uh, Cole misses a Shining Wizard, the last shot, and EC3 rolls him up. Schoolboy, one, two, three. EC3 is your victor over Adam Cole, baby. Afterwards, uh, Roderick, Sean, Kyle O'Reilly hit the total elimination onto EC3. All four men attack EC3 and take him up the ramp. Cole with the Shining Wizard to the back of EC3's head. So EC3 yet the victor. At, at the end, uh, Adam Cole in the Undisputed Era, you know, lay him out. So I'm looking forward to it. It's more a continuation with, uh, you know, possible contenders for the North American World's Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Bobby Fish grabs a chair and he brings it to the stage and he hits EC3 in the leg with it. So... Again, more progression. I dug it. Then we see a, a video package from Mia Yim, who will be debuting next. And then security is standing outside full cell. Nikki Cross tells him that he's coming, and she runs away with her maniacal laugh. Oh, I love Nikki Cross. Match number two was Mia Yim's NXT debut against Aaliyah. Uh, I gotta tell you, <laughs> I, I like Aaliyah as a heel. I do. I'm, I'm happy that they're doing something with her. Aaliyah hits an elbow, but Mia Yim arm drags her drop kick. Uh, Aaliyah drops Mia on the middle rope and hits the clothesline. Elbow drops to Mia for the two count. Aaliyah with the chin lock using Mia's arms. Aaliyah slides into the corner, hits a Thez press, then punches her. Uh, Aaliyah with forearms in the corner. She does hit a very nice Northern Light suplex. I will give her that. It reminds me of like Alicia Falks esque uh, Aaliyah returns to the chin lock. Uh, Mia backs Aaliyah into the corner to get out of the hold. Mia with the forearm. Irish whips her. Aaliyah slides into the corner. Mia with a series of kicks in the clothesline. Uh, Mia with a drop kick and then the Yakuza kick, followed by the cannonball in the corner. Then at the end, she gets her with the Soul Food, a.k.a. Gail Kim's Eat Defeat, for the 1-2-3, and Mia Yim defeats Aaliyah in her debut on uh, NXT. Congratulations, Mia Yim. Bianca Belair 
argues with William Regal about getting a title shot since she is undefeated. William Regal is asked about Aleister Black in the name of the assailant. Uh, Regal says he does not know the name, but he knows that Aleister Black will take care of this. The Undisputed Era yell at Regal for what EC3 did, and Cole tells Regal to start doing his job. Regal says that the War Raiders will face Bobby Fish and Adam Cole next week, and obviously the Undisputed Era are not happy about this. We take a look back at Roman Reigns' announcement. Very sad, and prayers, and just, you know, speedy recovery to Roman Reigns. I mean, it sucks. It really does. We talked about it on Max Wrestling Leukemia. I just, like I said, Godspeed to Roman Reigns. I really want to see him back and better than ever. You will beat this. Um, we're back, and we look at Lacey Evans. Now, this is a great video package. Uh, she says she's the lady of NXT. As a Marine and a force is to be reckoned with, she has shown what a strong woman is capable of. Every woman who steps into the ring is a classless excuse, and she will get some true manners, whatever it takes to win. She says she has a right, a woman's right. She stands for what every woman wishes they could be. It is about uh, time a legitimate role model is the face of this company. I love her. That's all I can say is I love her. I think she's a great heel. Um, I'm going to say this right now. And uh, we'll do predictions uh, for Evolution. I'm probably going to do them with my mom in a separate audio, but I'm going to say this. Uh, I really want to see Kyrie Sane retain against Shayna Baszler, and I think her next feud should either be with the Miss Undefeated herself, uh, Bianca Bella, or Lacey Evans. Because Lacey Evans, two great heels, and both respectively, and uh, Lacey Evans and Bianca Belair. So either one of them I'm cool with. Uh, Tomasa Ciampa's in the back of the truck, and he's holding the gold tightly. Uh, then we show a video package for Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler to hype that matchup. That brings us to our next next matchup, which is uh, Justin Xavier and Cassius Ono. Oh my god. Alright. Uh, this is pretty much Xavier just hits a shoulder tackle. Cassius Ono pie faces him. Xavier hits a jumping back elbow. He did get some offense in. Uh, ono with the bicycle kick and the kick in the corner. Ono gets Xavier on his shoulders and he drops him to the mat. Hits a leg drop. Uh... Ono tells Regal this isn't what he asked for. Xavier has a couple punches and a chop. Then he hits an Irish whip, but Ono comes back with a running boot and a back senton, and two of them to be exact. Then he hits the rolling elbow to the back of the head for the three year winner, Cassius Ono. And that kid's lip was busted, that being uh, Justin and Xavier. After the match, we see Nikki appear on the stage, and she says he is coming, and she knows. Nikki with the maniacal laugh as she leaves. Um, then we see a package. Matt Riddle will be making his in-ring debut next week. And to be honest with you, there's your TakeOver War Games match. I was originally going to say Cassius Ono versus Keith Lee, but I think we're going with Cassius Ono versus Matt Riddle. Uh, William Regal's in the ring. He says, we are four weeks away from TakeOver War Games, and tonight he will let you know who will face Tommaso Ciampa for the NXT Championship. Speaking of the NXT Championship, Tommaso Ciampa comes out. Uh, Ciampa says, with all due respect, sir, he tells Regal to wipe that smug look off his face. He tells Regal not to stare at the champ's title. He tells Regal to make his announcement. But before he can speak, here comes the Velveteen Dream. Makes his way to the stage. He tells him to hold the phones and stop the presses because the headliner is here. Dream says that he has to scoop for William Regal. Has a scoop for him. They want experience at war games. It is not about the people today. It's about the Velveteen Dream, and he tells Regal he wants him to say his name. Lars Sullivan's not going to be left out of the interruption. So he comes out, tells everyone to be mindful of where you are. This is not up for debate because you are standing in Lars Sullivan's territory. Lars tells Dream to move because he is NXT's worst nightmare and the NXT championship belongs to him. The Velveteen Dream tells Mr. Sullivan that he understands that he thinks he is a nightmare, but he asks Lars to wear some pants when he talks to him, which was hilarious. Uh, Lars grabs Dream, but Nikki Cross enters the ring and she tells Regal that he's coming. We see Aleister Black outside beating up the security. And he comes to the ring, and Ciampa leaves. Uh, Black with the black mask kick to Lars Sullivan after he just got his jaw broken. But okay, wow, Lars. Um, uh, Alistair Black wants to know where he is as he talks to William Regal. Johnny Gargano attacks Black and hits him with a super kick and stands over him. And then Gargano tells Black, I'm right here. Johnny Gargano is the one who attacked Alistair Black. I'm looking forward to see where this goes. I really am. I'm intrigued. I really am intrigued. So, that was your NXT. A very interesting NXT. Why, Johnny, why? Uh, a very interesting 205 Live. Go out of your way to watch both respective main events. Uh, not main events, I'm sorry. Uh, as far as NXT goes this week, ooh, this is, this is a tough one. I would definitely go out of your way to watch Mia Yim's debut. Uh, watch EC3 and Adam Cole. And ju pretty much just watch the whole show and watch Cash Zona because the whole NXT was good. And the same goes for um, 205. Watch Mike Kanellis and Say Dorado. But really go out of your way to watch Mustafa Ali and Hideo with Tommy Falska anyway. That was a great match. Um, that's pretty much all i got to say. I'll be back next week in episode 18 to talk about 
205, which features Brian Kendrick versus Jack Gallagher, and Tony Nese versus Mustafa Ali, and the winner is the uh, number one contender for the Cruiserweight Championship. And next week on NXT, where we'll see Matt Riddle make his in-ring debut, and the Undisputed Era's Bobby Fish and Adam Cole, Bebe, take on the War Raiders. So, I'll be back next week. Everyone enjoy Evolution. Excuse me. Ooh. Everyone enjoy Evolution this Sunday night on pay-per-view. Uh, and just everyone have a great night. I'm going to get some rest. I'm tired. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Check out Max Wrestling, Max Wrestling UK. Check out RWT, RWT Podcast, and the respective Facebook groups on Facebook, Max Wrestling Podcast Interactive, and Raw Wrestling Talk. Uh, the Twitters for RWT, RWT Podcast, Max Wrestling UK, Twitter, uh, YouTube, Max Wrestling. Just say, search under Danger Zone Productions. Uh, for RWT, just type in RWT Podcast, Raw Wrestling Talk. The YouTube's right there. And just, just stay tuned, guys. Really, really just stay tuned and just enjoy uh, what we got coming with uh, pro wrestling in general and uh, what I have coming up for in the next edition of The Futures Now in regards to 205 and NXT, respectively. So with that being said, again, everyone enjoy Evolution, uh, highlighted by Ronda Rousey versus Nikki Bella for the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Charlotte, last woman standing for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Kyrie Sane and Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, and a whole lot more. Uh, Trish Stratus and Lita versus, well, as we know now, it's not Alexa Bliss because she's got pulled. It's going to be Alicia Fox and Mickey James. So enjoy Evolution Sunday. I'm going to go to bed. I'll talk to you all soon, and God bless, my friends. Thank you for listening.